Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Gigs. Everyone having a good morning? Good, I'll take that as a yes. I've got a couple announcements uh, in the place of Scott and Kevin here. So um, they wanted me to let you know that the Play Slam submissions are ready to be taken. The basket is downstairs by the registration desk. And uh, so they're looking for as many as possible. So the more we get, the more we get to see, of course. Uh, please put your Play Slam submissions face down in the basket so that nobody can Start thumbing through and reading them, please. Keep them face down. Uh, neighborhood Tapestries, South Omaha, is indoors tonight um, down at the South Omaha site. So um, you will be, what's the name of that, Steve? South High School. Yes, South High School, but is there a name to the theater? Just South High School Theater. So you are indoors. Um, <clears throat> the last announcement I have, we want to have one more after me, um, but the buses from Element and Building 13 will be leaving at 6.45, not at 6.30. Again, buses leaving Element and Building 13, leaving at 6.45, not 6.30. Okay, the, come on up. We have another announcement that they asked this young gent to go ahead and tell everybody. Hey, how's it going? I'm Mark Costello. Um, one of the great tragedies of the conference is that even the most diligent attendees sees about one third of the shows. So what I'm gonna be trying to do is get together like a share drive that anybody who wants to contribute can. We can upload our work, we can share it, we can critique. Um, if you're interested, just find me so I can write down your email address and invite you to the share drive, if that interests you. If not, no pressure. Great, I will welcome up our panel and uh, everybody enjoy the discussion today. Thank you. <laughs> Can one of these designers? Uh, yeah. okay. so do we have a lighting designer in the room? <laughs> oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the design panel uh, titled "Design and the All Important Collaboration of Our Threatened Species: The Dreams and Anguish of a New Generation." Um, before anybody mistake uh, Kevin Lawler's genius for my own mediocrity, uh, these are Kevin, uh, Kevin and, and the, the conference staff's uh, titles and uh, notions. So um, I'm, just, I'm just a moderator. Um, <coughs> yeah, right. uh, no, no, I mean, these are fabulous titles. So, um, but I, I'm in, in as much of a discovery as all of you. So um, anyway, uh, with that caveat or whatever, Let's begin. Um, uh, because we have our streamers and dreamers on the HowlRound website, uh, I'll be reading the uh, biographies of our panelists once again. Um, here to my left is Justin Townsend. He is the design wing coordinator. If you're not familiar with Justin's work, you should Google him. 
Um, also, he's the assistant professor of stage at Brooklyn College, at, at Brooklyn College uh, in, in New York City, and he's leading the design wing. Then uh, we have Christopher Cancel Pomales. Uh, Christopher is uh, a designer and performer uh, from Puerto Rico, based in Brooklyn, New York, um, and he is pursuing his MFA in design and technical theater at Brooklyn College right now. Uh, then we have Katie, Kate Fry, uh, a costume designer who uh, recently got her MFA uh, in costume at Cal Arts. Um, born at the intersection of Scandinavian style and New York chutzpah. Um, <laughs> her work seeks to explore <coughs> clothing as poetry. So welcome Kate. And then we have another Kate, although her last name is different from Kate Fry. Her <laughs> last name is St. John. Uh, Kate is a recent graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> With a degree in classics and art history. Um, and now she is uh, becoming a designer a and going to the, um, the Bay Area to be a, a properties fellow at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. And uh, lastly, over there, Colin, I haven't actually met you yet. I'm Eliza. Uh, pleasure. Nice to meet you. Um, Colin recently moved to New York City after having spent a year as the lighting designer for the associate company of Playhouse on the Square in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and so while he was there, he did a number of productions, and in New York, he designed the lighting for the U.S. premiere of Blackbird. Uh, so welcome, Colin. Um, so here we are talking about design, and, and just a bit about me. I'm no designer, but I have an appreciation <coughs> for aesthetics. Um, I know where my place is. I'm just a writer. Um, so I have great reverence and respect for design. Um, I think kind of the underlying question of this panel, I, and Justin and I were talking a little bit about this before the panel, uh, but it's, I guess it's kind of why, what can a bunch of uh, early career emerging designers offer to a group of playwrights in this big room here? Um, that's, that's the question I'm asking. So I wonder, anyone would like to take a stab at that? I'll jump. Um, so I, I, I've had this conversation, I think, probably with a few of you scattered around, um, and certainly with a few of our peers, but a reason that we feel that it's very important for us to have a presence here at this playwriting conference is that there's often kind of this chasm between uh, playwright and designer, uh, and I, I, a lot of that is just practical limitation of, you know, the, the playwright publishes the play, and then the play goes anywhere in the world, and anybody can pick it up, try and produce it. Clearly, playwright can't fly around following them. Um, but I, I feel like as um, artists and uh, people that are taught to think very critically about plays and kind of dissect them and then turn that into something visual, um, being a resource to the playwright uh, here and, and <coughs> kind of giving the playwright an insight into what we're thinking when we're actually going into producing something and the visuals that their writing is, uh, is giving us, I, I think is, kind of an invaluable resource. So as far as young playwrights being here, uh, or sorry, young designers being here, I, I think that's a, a nice insight that we're able to offer. And I think where we come together is words, and that we engage in dramaturgy um, as kind of the grounding point of design. And so it's really important that for us, our work might manifest visually, but it really starts at the same place that your work does, and I think that we can feed each other, and so it's a really important dialogue to engage in and encourage, because I think both works really expand when that conversation is engaged. Yeah, I, I was just thinking this couple of days how uh, we're, we're doing theater, and theater is all about human contact, and and when Justin sent us all the, the main stage readings, we had to read them and, and do a reaction of them. And, and, and it felt like a very, it, it, it always feels like a very uh, uh, personal and, and generic process, but it changed so much when you got a face of who did this. I mean, when I saw some of the, of the playwrights, I, 
it wasn't the face that I got in my head when I read the play. It was totally different. And, and a switch changed in my mind. Uh, there was another motivation. Uh, we had a chance of actually spending some time with the, the main stage playwrights. And the creative motivation is, is, is different. I, I, I can't explain why. It's just having a face and knowing uh, the person, it, it's, it gives another perspective. Um, I think something that was brought up yesterday is, is the culture of collaboration. <coughs> um, we're finding that more and more people of our age and, and later artists are, are coming in to the mix without the formal training or with diverse uh, experiences. And so I think having a diverse group of people here as collaborators will open doors for what the system looks like in the future. Um, and, and we talked about hierarchy of, of people yesterday, um, sometimes in, in the theater system. But it's also kind of a hierarchy of looking at the current hierarchy of visual, <coughs> poetic, lyrical. Um, and we're seeing in new performance movements um, all across the world that there are ways you can push the bounds of the medium and there are ways that th there's a fluctuation between when the visual is most important and when the text is most important. And I think to articulate that here and have people see us ha and how we think about plays in a different way, um, you know, opens up that dialogue. And I mean, we designers read plays different than a director reads a play, different than an actor reads a play and different than a playwright writes a play. And I think um, getting in on the ground floor and, and seeing where those, how those decisions are made, what those, getting a little insight into that thought process is really valuable um, for all of us because I'm certainly learning a lot from being with not just designers, you know, in a dark room drawing something, but I, I'm really enjoying the experience. Can I jump off there on uh, the collaboration and kind of uh, what we talked, what the panel was yesterday about um, uh, collaboration and approaching things where they were talking about everyone getting in a room and uh, you know the playwright saying I want to put this sound in and breaking from that I think at least personally I, I, I just wrote this down I have a fatigue with the process from a very formal uh, theater upbringing uh, you know even, even you, back you have a formal theater upbringing I, I, I feel I'm that way trying to, okay yeah yes um, you know where I, I started in high school and it was this is how you build the flat and you put the toggle here and you do this and then you do this and you use these platform sizes because this is how our wood comes and then you go through college and well this is the process and you do this research and you do this and at a certain point it just it gets very repetitive um, and I'm finding that at least the the other young people that I'm uh, meeting in uh, since I just moved to New York and in Memphis is everyone's really interested in breaking out of that and doing different things and interacting with the playwright and building off of each other's ideas and uh, the, I, I know that practicality is a big reason but I do think it's a shame that there's this expectation where you write the play and then you rehearse it with the actors and then you know in the last week or two you add all the tech and then you expect them to uh, apply all this stuff and get used to these props and the lighting designer you know can't really do anything until all their lights are up and then they can only fool around enough because suddenly it's preview and you have to open and there's <laughs> critics and there's just no time in that process for the play to react to what we're doing. Uh, your, <clears throat> your statement reminds me of, um, uh, I was at the TCG conference a year ago and Howard Shalwitz, the uh, artistic director of Woolly Mammoth Theater, I believe, made a, a point about the sort of uh, production line or the assembly line of, of theater and that it starts with the play and the plays written in a little vacuum, and then then you maybe then you bring in the designers, and then maybe you, at the end you kind of bring in the actors, and there this notion of the traditional uh, way that things go, and and the essentiality of of bringing more people together at the start of a process. Um, could you guys talk about uh, the different ways in which you have collaborated in the past? Um, have you ever been a lead artist on a project, for example? Um, I have done a lot of generative work um, in in college because there wasn't exactly a venue for um, student 
work or there wasn't a venue in the department to fund work so students kind of made their own company and sure undergrad theater can be I mean we did some terrible theater but um, <coughs> but uh, we worked in, and built stuff from the ground up um, and looked at looked at kind of what was new um, the piece I remember most and I was thinking about it yesterday um, when Sybil was talking and David um, is I did a production of Under Construction um, by Chuck Me, and it was the most self-indulgent two and a half hours that m I'm, maybe other people have put that much on stage, but it was I thought it was the most self-indulgent <laughs> thing, and I look at it in retrospect and think about, about that. Um, but we started in the room, and there was an ensemble of 13, and we went scene by scene, and we all just fleshed out, what are we going to do for this scene? I mean... We've got a we've got a stage direction that says you could do this or or you don't have to you know, and so we really kind of built that up and and that was the moment that I you know really started thinking that I could do theater um, and and that was a system that I liked. Um, it's again it's not as practical and I'm aware of that that I had that opportunity in a college bubble but um, to me it was it was the experience that informed what I would hope to do uh, in the future and now. I think um, a recent experience I had in terms of collaboration that was really interesting was working on this multimedia opera. And so a composer had created this set of music that <coughs> had a very John Cage quality with a 35-piece orchestra. And there was an animator, a video designer, there were dancers, a choreographer, um, and then theater artists like myself and a scenic designer. And what was so interesting was that we all had really different takes on this music, but the way we worked in our different disciplines, not just within theater, but the way musicians worked and the way dancers worked, it was really amazing to kind of see, to demystify, and because I think we all have a respect for each other's art, and I think within a theater process, you can say I really respect the words this playwright has created, so I don't want to step on any toes. And it was it can be great, I think, to just get in a room to kind of relish in the, the structure that we had as a great thing that really helped the process, but then also to kind of say, all right, well, they might not show up right at this time, and we're going to roll with it. So it was kind of a give and take in that way. Yeah, I've been, uh, for, for the past uh, five years, I've been working with this company in Puerto Rico that is called uh, Casa Cruz de la Luna. And, and the, the dynamic of the, of the group is, is practically collaboration. There's a couple of, of, of members. We are like five or six, and, and we change through time and move through places. But pretty much the way that the company works is like uh, everybody does everything. Uh, and... and we have we have the, the the director usually does the playwrights and 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 but we 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 get immersed in in the process and and actually the direction becomes a, a, a collaboration between all the members at some point. One one of the members will uh, uh, propose something and and it works in a very organic way the way the way that we work. Uh, we use a lot of of. Uh, media projections in which we, we the, the text becomes part of the visual uh, aspect of the play uh, of the play and and you know I, f I feel a lot of satisfaction in, 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 in that kind of work um, um, I this is a personal quest that I have is, is to become as complete as an artist as I can and and is only in 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 those opportunities of getting into unknown terrains uh, of the theater that I can actually find out how to grow in, in what I know. I know that I can build things. I know that I, 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 I can design stuff. I know that I can perform, but I don't know. I didn't know that I could go into other, uh, other terrains and actually use those tools to improve the, the things that I already have. And what terrains did you go into, like it, with this particular group? Yeah, um, I mean, it's really where I started to 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 expand more into into what I could do at design. I really I, I started with this company as a performer mainly, 
but then with with the work with them is 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 what I started to actually move to design. It is is something that I'm 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 actually starting to do right now. It's not something that I've been doing for a long time. Only only when I when I got those opportunities and, and, and that experience is, is what really moved me into that. And and I don't think I'm gonna be a designer for life. I think I'm gonna be many things and, and, and that's the way that it should work. Colin. Um, so as a collaborative experience recently, the, the sh uh, U.S. premiere of Blackbird that I did um, was with a bunch of very young people, uh, much like myself, and we're all kind of coming at it from a different angle. But one of the most interesting things was our producer is actually a performance artist, um, but she decided to get on board to help us publicize and things like that. But boy, she made me fight for every decision. And it was actually, it, and not in a bad way, in the, okay, so we do have a reason to do this. Um, and she's coming from a background where you're just thinking of, I guess, uh, probably a lot more specificity and the meaning of every little action that happens that I think sometimes where we have uh, the structure of a play and also probably a lot more time to fill that small things kind of get away as just natural. Um, so that was really great to, to learn from her, as well as also her concept of the entirety of the experience as part of the design space. Um, we didn't have a, a theater to work in. We were actually fortunate enough that uh, a woman allowed us to use an empty art gallery uh, completely for free. So there are still people out there that support young people and give you free things, so they're out there. Look for them. Um, <laughs> they are, I swear. It's crazy. Um, but her, she was always pushing us to, you know, not just design a box within the museum space. It was like, it, um, love the fact that you're in a museum. Use that. Don't ignore it. Don't shut it out. Um, and we ended up with a really interesting play, and uh, we filled it all with cork and people were invited to just kind of walk around and lay in it and a lot of that I think came from her background and the way that you, you're allowed to watch a performance art piece that we don't necessarily assume is allowed um, when we do theater. I'm curious if you could all speak a, a bit about your different backgrounds. Um, uh, Kate St. John, you have a degree in classics and art history. Uh, Christopher, you mentioned how you we're coming at design a bit from like a performer's perspective. Uh, Kate, you're making clothing as poetry. Uh, could you talk a bit about these different influences and how you feel um, uh, your different backgrounds affect your approaches as designers? Uh, yeah, so I, I said earlier that I, I feel like I have a very formal theater background. Uh, but started in high school doing plays uh, as a technician, building flats and whatnot. Um, but I, I think that since then, while there's uh, the formality of my training, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, I, I grew up in Latin America, um, kind of traveling around the world with my mother, and my father's a photographer, um, a fine art photographer, I guess he'd prefer me to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I was fortunate enough that when I'm with him, we go and see art and we, that, that's been part of what's opened me up, I believe, um, and kind of helped me kind of shake loose the, the four by eight. Um, so I designed two sets before I knew what four by eight meant. Um, so I, I didn't have the background. I started doing theater two years ago um, in college. Uh, didn't have a venue to do it in high school. Um, I, I always wanted to be in academia. I thought, I'll, I'm going to teach Greek and Latin and, um, you know, pretty s swanky institution somewhere someday. I'm going to get a PhD. I'm going to spend 12 years, in, 12 more years in school. Um, and, and, I, and I studied modern contemporary art history. So I got really involved with installation. And I worked for a student gallery um, as a curator and a director. So the curation part was fun. Directing was the part where you find the free spaces. and. And I think the kind of fortunate thing about about what we can do is that we're used to we're used to fighting for spaces because we started, or at least I started doing art when the funding start stopped coming. Um, 
and there's these we toured the Bemis Center yesterday and I'm and I'm just so impressed by how much how much local support there is for the art and people who do want to give money to see you um, and as the director put it if you fail for three months then great you're you're learning and, and that's that's what you should do um, so I it's funny because the fact that I didn't have a theater degree in many was often brought up in, in interviews and in discussions I've had with people. So I think I just think it's great that there's a kind of diversity of backgrounds um, for people working. I certainly have a different approach. Um, I've read tragedies in Greek, um, which I is is fun. It's cool, I think. Um, so uh, that's that's what I did, and I got here, and I don't know where I'm going to go, but I hope that I just build experiences in different areas and become well-rounded or something. <laughs> um, well, I, I just earned my MFA at CalArts, so I now officially have a degree, um, but I entered it without really the formal theater training or background. Um, I, I think, I mean, my love of clothes started before I like knew how, what, you know, I would dress myself at age three and always loved garments and thought kind of fashion would be something for me. And, and um, then I, I went to the United Nations School and studied anthropology when I was younger. And um, in college, I studied French. And, um, you know, I, I really pursued academia as a place for me to just learn things I couldn't really <coughs> teach myself. Um, and then kind of found costume by working in the costume shop, I had always sewn, and that was something my grandmother taught me. And um, and there I really realized there was this place where I could m kind of marry my interests of creative writing and fashion and history and anthropology and psychology, and that dramaturgy became this really exciting thing for me. Um, so that's really where, where my love of costume design started, and I think um, the visual arts at large is something I'm interested in, be it theater or film or performance art. and um, really getting to then finally work in costume design, it was the interaction and the engagement with performance and the body and really the relationship with the actor and bringing things to life um, is where you know things went from the page to this really great, exciting, interactive space um, that, that was fun and really intellectually engaging. Uh, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid <laughs> <laughs> until I got to college. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't a, a theater program where I was studying, so I ended up uh, graduating of sociology, which completely changed the way that I saw everything. And uh, But I did uh, theater all through college um, in a very small group. And again, we had to do everything. We, we have not a lot of money. and. Uh, I've, I've worked constructing uh, TV studios and theater. I've worked as, uh, as, as a technician in a theater. I, I, I have done a lot of things that, that have, I think they gave me a different way of, of, of looking uh, at the theater. Even the performing part, I mean, being inside of the space and looking at things and also being outside and looking at things, you, it, it, it gives you perspective. That, that, that's, that's the thing. Um, and, and all these opportunities, all these experience that have brought me to what, what, where I'm, I'm right now. I don't know why I'm in this table talking, but. Because uh, you're a designer. Because I'm a designer. <laughs> <laughs> It has just been in instrumental. I, I, I don't think that, that, that I, I would be what I am today with, without, without all those things that I've done. Mm -mm. I want to open this up to the, um, to the group, but I know Justin mentioned you. Yeah, I just had, I, you know, thinking about, uh, thinking about us here, and, and we were talking about collaboration yesterday, and, and, and I, I, a question that I continue to chase, and uh, I'm curious to hear your thinking on this, is, uh, Alessa, you were bringing up the, the machination. The, the, the Henry Ford teaches us a great lesson that if we all work on our individual part as it moves down the assembly line, we create a better, faster automobile. Um, uh, and as we look at playmaking, w you know, we, we talked yesterday about that if we all sit in the same room for three years, eventually someone's going to want a playmate. Uh, where, where is the sweet spot? I, and and it, might be on the, it might be on either side of that. But, but for you all, 
wh where is the sweet spot of working in a in a process? And obviously, it changes every time, and we know that different things need different people. But 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 where do you like to be? Where 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 do you find that uh, if only it could be like this? Um, I ha had a recent experience with a really nice model that I liked. Um, uh, <laughs> We started by meeting monthly. Um, we knew it was going to be a device piece. Um, we got permission from Kate Falk to, to explore the Worcester style. Um, and so we met once a month. So we, we were doing other work. You know, it wasn't on our minds, but we kind of pulled the pieces together. We get a new cut of scenes every, um, every monthly meeting from the curator of the piece. and. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm not quite following this tale. So, sorry. And I'm nervous that other people. Who? Okay. It was a fashion model, and so where were you getting text from? I, <laughs> I said model, and then I giggled to myself because I realized that you could have interpreted fashion model, but I meant the system model. Like, um, so the model of working. Um, okay, like yeah. a rubric or a structure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we were gonna create a piece. There was one man who was going to kind of pull text from which we were gonna draw. St stuff and he, we called him the curator but we met once a month for about seven months and um, <coughs> then we launched into rehearsal for a month before the show so we had this time to kind of cultivate ideas and and have an open dialogue but it wasn't um, it was more practical because it wasn't burdensome and it wasn't being in the room for three years um, and I kind of enjoyed that model and I would like to try that again uh, for me, something that actually kind of puts me at odds with my desire is that I desperately need a deadline, um, which a, a hard deadline, because otherwise I, I don't think I'd ever finish anything. So <laughs> I, I, I like things to stew, and I like to take a break from stuff and come back at it, but I also like that moment where um, it's, okay, now we've got to make decisions and start throwing things up there. Um, so I do, I do think that there's a balance that it, it, it can't always be three years, but I think there's some things that may need that. But for me, I think that that last month is always going to be the make or break period for whatever is going to happen in the end. I don't think that any of my designs are mine. I mean, not even the best ideas. Always the best idea comes from somebody else, from the director, from, from, from an actor, from, from another fellow designer. So I, I don't think that I would be successful being in a, in a traditional kind of uh, work. Uh, and I would go crazy because I would like to give my ideas to, to the other parts of the process. I, 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 to me, the, the only way that I will be able to work is if there's equal uh, collaboration and feedback from the other parts. I think also a big part of process is that um, we're always taking on these new projects with new people. Mm -hmm. And so much of what we do is interpersonal. And so there's like finding that, that sweet spot for me is that mojo for the way you can communicate with your group. And sometimes even the most arduous processes can create something really amazing. Um, but I think that's not ideal. But I think that um, what I've found that I really love is that the you have your own personal practice um, and where you kind of get those eureka moments and can bring them to the table and really then share it. But I think it's really interesting how um, you really do have to have a modular idea of process to really get um, to serve the piece in the end of the day. Questions from the group? Hi. Um, so the, uh, I write a lot of pieces that uh, really make the design elements, um, the de design elements are a key player, a key character in my pieces. And I'm curious about, I tend to put on the page um, a suggestion of a mood, look, or feel, but I, I don't want to ever be too prescriptive because I really want to invite the designers um, to fully uh, explode with their ideas. And I just wonder, from your perspective, is there a sweet spot of what is on the page that helps you get what you need to dive into your creative zone without being too much that it, it boxes you in? Um, 
I think that everyone has a different style, and um, I mean, if we all f followed the original I intent, I mean, we'd all still be doing Shakespeare in the Globe. Um, I think with new plays, I, Justin and Elena um, have made me very aware of how uh, to treat a first play is to see what what the playwright intended, and, and that's not something I'd really thought of because the kind of original work I had worked was um, always kind of generative and not and it didn't start with a source text usually. Um, so I think I think each script provides an opportunity, um, and I don't. I wouldn't say that I prefer one or the other. Uh, I hope that I ask when I change your stage directions. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> that's that's the best I can say at this point. Um, but I I equally find challenges and find it interesting when you are limited by those prescriptions. How you how you um, find a loophole. <laughs> uh, I I can probably answer you exactly what I do, um, and maybe that'll be the answer, which is often I will actually black out any direction uh, whatsoever and then read the entire play. Um, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's one of the like, most horribly offensive thing I've ever seen to a playwright. <laughs> but then usually um, I, I go back and then compare that to the notes that were put in there by the playwright or by whoever it is that put the notes in that version um, and compare that to what I felt. And sometimes interesting things can come out of where we were at odds, and I'll, oftentimes I'll, I'll uh, see, oh yeah, we're, yeah, totally, that's exactly what happened. Um, but I want to make sure that what's happening is not, it, it's coming from the text, um, and I'm sure that can apply to everything, but that's usually what I do. The, the way I feel is like, I mean, when I read something, I, I, I just want to have the necessary information. And what's necessary is it's so ambiguous, it could be anything. But it's, it's either the necessary or just go crazy and invent something that, that just blows my mind. And, and then I have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll, I mean, I think it can be tricky, but it can be engaging. So I think it's important to go with your gut instinct because in the end of the day, if you don't put it on the page, it's something you're going to want to talk about. So maybe it's just considering how you write it on the page um, and then how you engage in conversation after that. I, uh, so oh, I think Elena's we have another question. question. Yeah. yeah, I have a question. Hi. Um, it's amazing how varied your backgrounds are, especially some of you coming from performance perspectives and other um, types of art forms. And then I'm really curious about this language about um, now, how is it that designers think differently about plays than all of the rest of us? And so it seems like we come, we celebrate our varied backgrounds and then yet we want to celebrate our singularity that somehow we do something different than all the rest. So I'm interested to know how is it that you read plays and, and how do you read it differently or how do you think you read it differently than us? And should you be reading it differently or should we all be trying to read um, as good dramaturgs, as good first time readers, as good children? I don't know. Um, but how do you, how should you, and um, should we cross out the stage directions? Yeah, that's terrifying. Well, I don't think it's, it's terrifying. terrifying. I thought like actually sent a little shiver up my spine. I actually don't think it's terrifying because I do think sometimes this is going to offend everybody else who Colin didn't offend. Um, if the play is bad, then yes, sometimes it's good to cross out the stage directions. But we're hoping that we're all working towards something great, and I do feel like the intent of the playwright helps. Um, so in some respects, I'm not totally offended, but, another, but now I've offended everybody else. So anyway, how do you think differently? <laughs> if you think, think, you think differently, please. and how should, um, should designers be thinking differently, and should all of the different compartmentalized mediums that we work in be different? I, I think I want to keep a note on the last question and bring it into this one, which is um, something that I was fumbling for that didn't get to when I was actually responding was um, sometimes, for me, it's not the stage direction, and this is the case in any, any prescription in any form in the theater world. It's about what the intended effect is. Um, 
if if I have a technical director who wants to, if my I'm over budget and I he says we have to cut this, I want him to have to understand why I wanted that element, what it was doing, so then he can provide an alternative. Um, so I think it's not always about following the the stage directions, but it's being in the spirit of them. Um, and I think that's with anyone's anyone's um, role in theater. In terms of reading the plays differently, I mean, I th think of, I mean, I lay it out spatially, which I guess anyone does. I mean, we've been taught to do it since we were kids, reading stories. Um, so there, there's practical, but um, I don't know. You you really challenged me on that one because um, now I'm trying to figure out how we're special, um, <laughs> and I'm not. I, I'm not. I, I think there might be a moment here. I, I want to like tear down the curtain and tell you all a secret. You can all read plays like designers too. I think it's it's not it's not that we're special in that how we read it. I think it's special in that we our job is to read it with the intent to make something visual out of it. But anybody can do that. I can read a play like a director as well. I know, right? Um, so I, I absolutely see your point. And I think that's a really great one to bring up, which is that ed anyone can read it. And then for me, it's when I'm reading the words, literally visions are forming in my head. And uh, as I go through, I'm usually writing those down, uh, like what images come up. Like sometimes I was reading one of the main stage plays and I just saw like this illuminated cross, like up light and very stark. And it doesn't necessarily make it into the final uh, literal visual, but it's, it's things like that that pop up that you're just thinking of. And I, I think everybody does that. We just get to then, you know, make something. Justin was making a strong facial expression at one moment. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, well, it's special that, that is, is upsetting to me, that idea that, that, that it, and, and that's where we're going to all be special, and then the word special is not useful, so then let's not use that word. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, um, I th I, I'm only aware of how I can perceive the word, world, right? But, and, 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 and I know my job at hand is to, is to visualize, is to create a play on stage. So certainly there's overlap um, as I work with directors and performers. Uh, 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 w w w Bainbridge, was it yes, last night? Who said I can play this part? <laughs> um, and, and 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 even he can't help but perceive the the smallness of the largeness. And and uh, and I I think that we're, that's where uh, directors are good at keeping us all in check uh, uh, in terms of understanding the wholeness of the play uh, as we all get lost in our individual interests, uh, uh, perhaps. So for me, um, uh, uh, I a, a relish in that conversation. Uh, in, and that perhaps I'm agile at making a light cue or agile at understanding spatial relationship. Um, w it, it, it's something I'm adept at. It might not be something that one should use of my skills every <laughs> time. In fact, maybe ignore them sometimes because the play doesn't need that. But, I, but, I, but, I, but I'm aware of that skill set and, and, and I bring it to the table and perhaps it's useful this time around. Um, and just as Brainbridge brings his well, we'll leave it at that, to the table. And, and he, can, he can have that, at, and sometimes we need that, for goodness sake. Um, uh, and and it's, it's the director I, I, I propose, and, and, and it's that lovely, uh, that lovely um, uh, exchange with him, the dance that, we, that, that, that sort of flushes out, that it's a production entirety, that it's not just the play itself that comes to life, that it's the guidance and the, the sort of movement, again, the Ouija board, the, the assembly of that. Um, that, that makes me excited. So, so I, 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 for me, uh, I wouldn't propose it's a different point of view. It's the only point of view I have uh, that, that I bring bring in. And so, so somehow I'm sitting at this table because of that because of that fault. So keep dancing. Bye. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks everyone. Yeah,